How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the Reptileverse. My name is Grant DeYoung and you are watching the Reptileverse. And today we are introducing a new series. This is the Head to Head series where we pit two fantastic pet snakes and see which one of them comes out on top as the better pet snake. And what better way to start it off than the first two larger constrictors that I ever owned. So today is going to be the common boa, the BCI boa constrictor, or BI boa constrictor, versus the Burmese python. So, let's get into it. So this series is going to be broken down into five categories. We're going to have temperament, uh, basically how well you can interact with the animal. We're going to have feeding, how easy or cheap is it to feed the animal. We are going to have housing, how easy is it to house the animals? Do you need to buy something like this four foot enclosure or build something like this eight foot by four foot enclosure or larger? And then the next category that we're going to have is category four. That is going to be the variability category. Basically, what different color morphs can you get of these animals? Or what locality animals are there? And then the fifth and final category is the wow factor. How incredible is it? How amazing is it for people when you pull these giant animals out? Or little animals, depending on what video we're doing. How incredible are they when they're out and being shown to people? So, those are our five categories. Let's get right into them. So, category one is the temperament. Now, the Burmese Python is very well known for having a very laid-back personality, a very calm snake, very docile animal, very slow moving, and they're relatively easy to handle. I love my berm, I've never been bitten by my berm, and the only uh, defensive Burmese Pythons I've seen are wild-caught Burmese Pythons. So if you get a captive bred individual, it is highly likely that you're going to be able to handle them without any issue. Now one of the downsides to handling a Burmese python is while they may be very friendly, there is in a certain element of danger to handling a Burmese python. Burmese pythons at large females can exceed 15 plus feet in length and it can be very dangerous for one person like myself alone to go and handle a Burmese python alone. That is not something I would recommend. The general recommendation is when you're handling like a larger snake, like a Burmese python, a retic, an anaconda, if you're handling one of those three animals, you should have a second pair of hands just to be on the safe side. And when I have any snakes that are that size, we will definitely be following that here. My personal family rule is that if there is a snake that is over 10 feet in length, you need a second pair of hands to handle it. <coughs> now going to boas, the only real downside with boa constrictors is I have heard occasionally with baby boa constrictors uh, being a little bit nippy, a little bit defensive and scared just as little babies, but if you handle them regularly as babies they should calm down really quick. If you watch Go Herping, his boa constrictor that he used to have, Rosie, she was a very defensive animal. She hadn't been handled hardly ever by people. And it took only a couple of weeks of regular human contact with her and she calmed right down. And not only that, boa constrictors, or the common boa, which is what we're really looking at here, they max out at about six, maybe eight feet as a really large like Colombian boa constrictor so there's not nearly as much of an element as, of danger as handling one. I would be more than confident uh, if my boa constrictor was eight foot I'd be perfectly okay getting him pulling out handling him and moving around while I'm cleaning whereas with the Burmese python again I would want a second pair of hands when he is full grown. So because of these reasons the boa constrictor is going to squeeze by with the first victory of this video. Alrighty, so category number two is the feeding category. So we're going to start off with boa constrictors in this category. The boa constrictor, while they are a big constricting snake and they need large prey items, I see a lot of people able to squeeze by either feeding 
uh, one or two jumbo rats or a larger rabbit because feeding one larger prey item is definitely healthier than two but a smaller like maybe a five to ten pound rabbit or, or a jumbo rat are not terribly hard to come by especially not in this day and age where we can just go online and order frozen thawed rodents which you should be feeding frozen thawed by the way but you can just go online order frozen thawed rodents or small rabbits have them shipped to your door in a couple of days and you're ready to go and it's not terribly expensive to do so especially not when you look at like one $25 rabbit that you're feeding to a boa every four to six weeks that's $25 a month is not that expensive in comparison to say dogs or cats but then you get into feeding Burmese pythons now you can feed Burmese pythons rabbits but exceptionally large Burmese pythons like large females will need to eat things like pigs pigs are a lot harder to source than rodents or rabbits I still have yet to find a source for frozen pigs thankfully my Burmese python is still young he's about a year and a half two years old and he is still eating small rats so that's easy enough to handle right now but when he does get bigger I'm gonna need to find a source of pigs probably and now when it comes to the feeding response just feeding response alone would be a tie between these two boas eat like boas berms eat like berms I have never had an issue with my boa constrictor or my Burmese python going off of food I've never seen it happen the only times I've heard of it happening are when they're being cared for in improperly and then it might take a little bit to get them to eat but once you get their care dialed in correctly they pound down food like there is no tomorrow so just because rats and small rabbits are a lot easier to come by than say livestock the boa constrictor is going to squeeze by with the second victory of this video all right this the next one is housing you can probably see where this is probably going to go so my personal rule is the length of the snake uh, if you look at this four foot enclosure here uh, there is a small uh, dwarf retic in here uh, my rule of thumb is that my snakes need to be able to stretch out along the long side of their enclosure at the very least if they are stretching out along both sides of the enclosure then the enclosure is too small so following that rule if you have a six to eight foot boa constrictor getting an eight by four by four enclosure not too terribly difficult there are a lot of pvc companies in this day and age that you can get these nice eight by four by four pvc enclosures from and it's not too terribly difficult to do whereas a 12 to 15 plus foot snake i don't know a single enclosure company that sells 12 to 15 plus foot long enclosures so that is something that you definitely need to build yourself so if you aren't very adept at building enclosures that may not be for you i i'm comfortable building large enclosures i built this eight foot enclosure for uh, stark and daenerys the tegus all on my own and it turned out great and i i love building enclosures but it does just come down to how small of an enclosure you can really put them in if you can put both of these snakes in like a walk-in bedroom sort of a scenario that's fantastic go for it uh, bigger is better uh, I know there's still some people that argue about enclosure size there's still some people that say to keep ball pythons in 40 gallon tanks on Facebook groups which is absolutely insane to me so yes bigger enclosures are generally better there are occasionally oddball cases where they're not as good but bigger does tend to be better so you can't really keep a 10 plus foot uh, Burmese Python in an 8 by 4 by 4 enclosure in my personal opinion you just should not do that I know some can get away with it and it'd be perfectly fine and if you're one of those people that keeps a Burmese Python in an 8 by 4 by 4 I'm not calling you out right now if your animals are happy and healthy uh, you interact with them and they're active and they're eating temperature and humidity are right more power to you I just would like my animals in larger enclosures 
So, because of that, obviously, the boa constrictor gets the third victory today. Now, at number four, we have the variety to the species. Now, when we're looking at variety, we're saying morphs and localities. So, we're mostly going to look at morphs here because Burmese pythons really don't have any localities. Uh, common bows do have a couple localities. Uh, they have the Colombian, the Hog Island, and some Central American localities that I'm not super familiar with. So we're just going to look at morphs because that's what I know the most about. When you look at something like a boa constrictor, there are definitely some morphs out there. You can get albinos, you can get sunglows, you can get the IMG boas, you can get the hypo boas, you can get motley. There are so many morphs out there, but then you get to the Burmese python. The Burmese python, you have caramel, you have albino, you have hypo, uh, pearl, piebald, lavender, and so on and so forth and what have you. There are so, so, so many Burmese python morphs out there. I just have a normal because I do, uh, because I do these educational programs uh, and it's easier for me to show the normal variety than the albino variety. Now, if there are morphs of boa constrictors I'm missing, go down into the comments below, tell me what I'm missing. I'm gonna be honest, I'm definitely not an expert. I know a lot more about python morphs than I do boa morphs, so I'm sure I'm missing some. Uh, moon glow is another cool one that I know I'm missing, uh, but I think that's about it. And I'm really not sure about the others. So you can correct me, of course, in the comments on whatever morphs I missed. Even if I said don't correct me, you would anyway. So I'm giving you permission now because it's easier for both of us. <laughs> so because of all of that, the Burmese Python is going to squeeze by with its first victory of this video. Alright, fifth and final category is the wow factor. How amazing is it to pull these animals out? And I'm going to say in a program setting like what I do. Now, don't get me wrong, pulling out a six to eight foot bow constrictor uh, in a program in a crowd of people is an incredible snake. A big snake that you drape across the shoulders and arms. They look incredible and I love them. I love seeing the looks on kids' faces when I pull out a big snake. But that all being said, it's not quite as much of a wow snake as a Burmese python. A 10 to 15 foot snake that needs a couple of people to hold on to is just generally going to be more impressive than a 6 to 8 foot boa. Again, I love both of these snakes. I just personally think that when it does come to the short little wow factor, Burmese pythons are always going to squeeze by the victory. Burmese pythons are the third or fourth largest species of snake in the world, depending on how you look at it. So, I definitely do think that they squeeze by with a victory and wow factor. So, did you agree with the outcome of these categories? Uh, in the end, the bow constrictor did beat out the Burmese python with a score of 3 to 2. So, if you disagree with this list, go down in the comments, tell me why you disagree with it, what you would have changed. And I will... I love interacting with you guys in the comments. It makes my day every time one of you comments, so definitely go down there and do that. Also leave what head-to-head -head you'd like to see next. I'm thinking next time I might do Burmese pythons versus yellow anacondas, because those are my two favorite snakes in the world. So I might do that next time, but definitely leave it down in the comments below what you would prefer to see, and we'll make it happen. All right, in the description below, you'll find a link to my Discord server, a link to my Patreon, and a link to go support United States Association of Reptile Keepers, or US ARC. Go follow all those links, show them all some love. Patreon is as little as a dollar a month, and definitely go to support US ARC if you haven't done so already. And with that, once again, my name is Grant DeYoung. You've been watching Direct Averse. Peace out, YouTube.